in uh, the Joomla sphere. So some things I, I saw uh, around, but also using Joomla. And maybe we can use some of those things in Joomla also. Well, we as uh, developers, software developers, are a bunch of losers in a way, because uh, we don't succeed very often in uh, getting uh, software delivered within time, budget, and requirements. It for a long time, it was in Piet's uh, presentation, it was only 25% that was uh, accomplished within time, budget, and, and, uh, and uh, time, budget, requirements, requirements? <laughs> yeah. And even 50% uh, uh, of it filled, uh, one fifth of it filled, uh, about uh, almost 20%. Well, the, the last thing is about the same, but the success rate is a bit higher now. It's now about 39%. Uh, That's much higher for smaller projects. For uh, larger projects, it's much uh, worse for uh, about half of the big projects just totally fill. On, on, on a lot of a lot of things, um, but it has improved a bit over the time, and uh, there has been some. This is all from the chaos report. This is from the, si the the figures from 2012, but the 2013 chaos report is also available on the internet with all the graphic uh, things on it. Very inter interesting to read, especially because they investigate why. And that's interesting because you wa don't want to be in that red or even in that uh, orange yellow uh, part. You want to be in the green part, the succeeding uh, uh, thing. How to do that? Well, except f uh, the, the, the how big your project is, one of the key uh, things that is important is whether it's done via, via wa waterfall or. Uh, I thought it was another. In the green, no. <laughs> done f via waterfall or uh, agile. You uh, you know maybe a waterfall method is before you do f first all the analysis, the requirements, design, implementation uh, is only uh, you you're over the half of your project. You begin in, in sure. the impl impl implementation, then you do some testing, and then in the end you deploy the whole thing. And then it uh, is, oh, shit, this is not good, that, that is not good, and then you get the feedback. And uh, the on the contrary, you have agile development. You work in small sprints. So you try to get small uh, parts. Uh, at, at, at the moment, most uh, companies work with uh, one-week sprints. Then in a week, you try to deliver uh, valuable software, S something the customer can do something with. And oh this is the graphic card, of course. Uh, that is su successful, in uh, is, is one of the key factors uh, for whether uh, your uh, project is successful or not. Uh, in but uh, still, there has to be done a lot to improve that. Th here you see a human being dev development. That's also, we do that normally uh, more agile. You try something, you get immediate feedback, you do something, you get feedback, and so you get all kinds of stages until success. And the other way, the, tr the traditional, the waterfall method, is more you, you take uh, an eye, you take an ear, you take a leg, and in the end, you integrate all the uh, parts, you pull the switch, and then you get maybe some unexpected unex behavior. Uh, you must look out with uh, delivering uh, software that is valuable. Uh, if, if you deliver small parts, the small parts has to be valuable. Otherwise, you get something like this. You deliver a car, but the wheels will come later. Yeah, you have nothing. Uh, it's of no value to have a car without wheels. That all started, that thinking about that in the Agile Manifesto 2001, 
you see here with this beard, Martin Fowler, Kent Beck, Alistair Cockburn, uh, some uh, Kent Beck type of test driven design. We'll talk about that later. Uh, it's this the whole Agile manifesto. It's uh, rather small. You can put it above your bed. And there are 12 principles laying under it. And uh, the first principle of Agile working is to deliver early and often and deliver valuable software. So small parts and all parts has to be of value for your customer. That's uh, the, the most difficult part, to get the small part also do something. Um, I want to talk a, a bit now first about the, this is a line between DDD, TDD, BDD. What the fuck is, <laughs> is that all? <laughs> well, DDD is domain driven design. This is test driven design and behavior driven design. But there is one line from the one to the other. And there are some interconnections between them. Um, language is very important in uh, how we see the world. There is a linguistic relativity theory that started with Mr. Wilhelm von Humboldt. <laughs> Maybe you know him from the von Humboldt Universität in Berlin. It's uh, called after him. And he was one of the uh, people who did some investigation to what is uh, language, uh, how is language related to how we look at the world. Because with a different language, maybe we, we look a bit different. Uh, I, I, I know that, uh, that, oh, first, the other guy, Frans Boas was an uh, anthropolo anthropologist around 1900 who did a little of a lot of investigation to Eskimo languages. And Eskimos, you know, they have different words for snow. And so, and it's also because those different words are different things for them. So loose snow and fast snow, from which you can build an igloo, are different words because they're different things. So that's also a, an example, which I lost the tick which I leave behind, but um, as an example of different um, words that let you look different at the world. For instance, we have a, a word for red as a color, and we have a, a word for light red, pink. But in Russian, they also have a other word for light blue. word. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Golubui. That's just what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to re rehearse that a bit. I read you in test kitchen. Go, go the boy. Go the boy. Yeah. Bastard. But this, uh, we don't have a, an, another word like we have for pink of red, right? A, a light red, uh, a different word. We don't have an, a different word for light blue. So Maybe in Russian, they see light blue a little bit more as a different color, as something else. As a, might not be the strongest uh, example, but it's nice to get your Russian in. And um, uh, Ed Edward Sa Sapir was uh, graduating with Franz Boas, and from him is that uh, Sapir word hypothesis. And uh, for instance, uh, uh if you try to explain the difference between colors to someone who is blind, that's very difficult. You, you say, yeah, uh, what's the difference between red and blue? Yeah, red is more uh, warm. You make me feel, no, I don't feel, no, it's the same warmth. And that's, yeah, but if you look at it, it feels more warm. No, I don't feel it. Uh, it's, uh, if you, the, you know language, and the way we see the world are very much related. And we need language to express 
ideas. I, I, uh, when I was small, I tried to explain why I didn't believe in a God to someone who believed in a God. But if I would use the word God, I was already using a whole theory. So language you use is also pushing you into some uh, thoughts in, uh, in a template of thinking. And we as developers, uh, it is very difficult to, to express yourself in a language. A language is also a kind of prison. How to express things that, that you have no words for. Happily, we have art for that, but that's also to express things that can't be expressed. But in we as developers often use CRUD, create, read, update, delete. That's a kind of language, very uh, a small language, which we put over the reality, and we see the whole reality through that template of create, read, update, delete. Uh, that's a very, a very small way to look at the, the uh, at the world. In uh, domain-driven design, the main thing is to use the language of the thing you are going to um, go going to um, uh, make software about. So to when you are doing something for a transport company, you are going to have a look how are they, what terms are they using, what words, what, what, how does it work, how do they express themselves to, to do their thing. And if you're trying to squeeze that all into uh, uh, maybe a, a crud, uh, into uh, uh, users, you don't have users in that domain. You have, you have only users in the domain of computer users and drug addicts, but not in transport companies uh, and in sports, maybe. But okay. <laughs> uh, so the, the main part of uh, uh, domain-driven design is the language you use and to learn the language of the customer uh, so that you can communicate with the customer and the customer can express what he wants to do. Well, a next step in uh, after domain-driven design was test-driven design, um, but tests are very boring. We all like to create things, new things, new ideas, new features. You know, into Joomla, I, I want to make this, I want to make that. Oh yeah, I had to write a unit test too. Mm. No, but uh, that d yeah, you know the feeling, yeah. <laughs> but uh, test-driven design has turned that around and says, okay, tests are boring, but let's use that to first test, uh, first write test, and then uh, uh, write the implementation, and we can see whether the implementation was good. But it's a, 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 a circle to uh, work in, it's called red, green, refactor, or mostly I say red, green, clean. Because first you have a test that fails, so the test is red, then you write the implementation, test is green, then you have written all the implementation, it's a bunch of, uh, you think, oh shit, uh, Raphael said I shouldn't use more I indentations, and uh, so you refactor it all, but the test still has to su succeed. So that's the good thing of in small uh, amounts, writing a test, uh, writing uh, the implementation, and then refactoring the implementation. Um, a step further is uh, done by uh, uh, Dan. Oh, you have to change. Oh, another intermezzo also mentioned by uh, Raphael. Uh, there is quite some critic uh, these days on test-driven design. For instance, uh, James Copian wrote a, a paper, you should read, it's very valuable, it's, it's 
uh, certainly if you wa want to write unit tests, and it's called why most unit tests seem as great. And it's, uh, he has very good arguments for that. And that was one of the things that started David Heinemann and Hans von, who started, who made Rails, uh, Ruby on Rails, to uh, give a keynote, D DHH is his uh, short name, short name, do you say that so in English? Or is that giving someone a short name is, well, well okay. <laughs> nickname, nickname, DHH. And uh, he had some very good arguments against uh, test-driven design. And, uh, and one of the things, this was, was in fact something said by Seth Godin. If something is easy to measure, it, it doesn't mean it's important. And code coverage is, has become a bit a fetish. You know? For <laughs> yeah, so it's should we test, test it? Is, is my code better from it? I don't know, but my code coverage goes up. And it's better code coverage, okay. And sometimes even that you, uh, you have something that's working, that's okay, you sh it's obvious that it's nice, but yeah, you have no code coverage. And you, 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 you uh, even can worsen your implementation by ri uh, making it testable and, uh, and, and things like that. Being testable and code coverage are fetish things that uh, you you must be careful with you must must still think about it what is it and is it necessary <laughs> yeah yeah the Joomla framework has also uh, so this Yeah. Okay, so, so some critics on it. It's a, it th there's, a, uh, there's a nice video, by the way. Also, Martin Fowler, Ken Beck, who started uh, TDD and uh, DHA, in a four series of each a half an hour each, every uh, uh, Tuesday evening it was, in the last four Tuesdays. And uh, it's, it's very nice to, uh, to see that, uh, but, but his, uh, the DHH keynote is also very good. But the all the links are in my slides and the slides will be on slides there. Uh, Dan North teached uh, uh, TDD and uh, got many questions. What should I test? How should I test it? Uh, how must I name the test? Mo mostly we just say test uh, with, with a method name and then you, ha you have the name of the tested method, but it doesn't say what it tests exactly. And then started with uh, giving your test names like it should do this, it should do that, that. And then someone wrote a parser to get all those method names without uh, the, the, the underscores in it. And you got a whole thing from my application should do this, should do that, should do that, etc. So there was a nice description and someone else he worked with said, hey, that's exactly the way we uh, uh, specify requirements for our software. So let's make tests that are uh, made via that, that, uh, that template. And so the template given when then was, uh, was made. You can read all about it in this book. This is a NIAC book, you know, uh, Manning Early Access Program. That's a book that's not yet finished. But you can already buy it and you can uh, download the updates and then you have the, the full book. But it's almost finished and it's very much uh, worth reading. I have no shares in it. Uh, you, you probably know Selenium uh, for tests. It's mostly uh, used for uh, integration tests. We also have it in Joomla CMS. And it's uh, emulating the a browser, so you can say for go to that page, and if you are there, you sh uh, you should see a button like that. If you click on that button, you sh should come on a page with that, 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 etc. So it's you can get uh, you can test things. You can use it very good. It's done by Watch for Re, for instance, 
we can test it also to uh, see if an update doesn't break things to automate those tests that you don't have to go to all those stages uh, yourself. It's very handy. Well, Selenium is uh, uh, also, it can also be used from uh, PHP Unix. And you have your unit test and the Selenium test uh, all together. You can uh, use the, the syntax you normally use in PHP Unix, like uh, assert assert that purple of perp uh, is true and uh, but that then with the selenium test um, later on selenium but uh, this was first ghat is an implementation of uh, that that uh, template what I just say of given when then you can write specifications of a feature, so you go to small parts, what I just said about working agile, you make small parts and you define what feature do I want to implement, and given that, that I'm, thi this is, uh, I'm on that page, uh, when I click on that button, then I should uh, have this and this and that. You can write those things in that language, in normal, normal English, then you go to the command line and so in the given one then and B hat makes uh, that su suggestion. Uh, this is uh, the how you write it. And then B hat gives uh, su suggestions how it would be written as a uh, as a test. And you say, okay, that's the so you can write the specification together with your customer because it's just in the normal language, well, in a kind of English. And um, then as a coder, you have to work on the stacks that are defined, that, that are suggested by PHAT. And in, for instance, in Drupal, they have a whole library of standard stacks that are already filled in, so you can easily use PHAT in Drupal, you can do that in Joomla too, in theory. And from the suggestions, you make a real test. It's only a, a small step what you need. So I, um, I go, won't go into it now, but it's, it's uh, rather easy to make tests like this. And um, then you have them tested but you don't test them directly into uh, uh, Selenium because you could use also other browser emulators. Selenium is a bit slow. Uh, for instance, if you have for the Joomla CMS, you run all the tests, uh, it takes, I don't know. Eight hours. Eight, eight hours, eight hours. That's a bit, that's not that you say, okay, do a feature, I run the tests. I'll have a coffee and another one, <laughs> and all day. And, uh, but so that doesn't work very quickly then. But with BHAT, you can also use so-called browse uh, headless emulators that are li like Gute. They are browser emulators that don't have all JavaScript on board, etc. but they're just sending an HTTP request and getting an HTTP uh, response back and analyze that HTTP response. So there's no waiting and things like you have in, uh, in Selenium. And it goes very quickly. And for some uh, things, you don't need all the, the AJAX testing that there you need a whole browser for. But a headless browser can be also be used in some uh, is for some tests. And so you can have it much quicker and Mink is a kind of uh, skin around uh, Selenium, uh, Gute, and, and, and other browser emulators. Very handy. You don't have, is this is not the only PHP uh, behavior driven design package. You also have Codeception, 
And uh, that is more for developers. Yeah, because you don't have all that give and when then. No, not together with the customer. No, we can just stay in PHP storm and we can just code just like we did before. Boom, I think. I think it's very popular under some developers, but I think it's a bad idea. I think we have it much better because you have to use the domain language. And that was the main part of domain-driven design, to, uh, to, to learn the language of your customer. And co-deception, but uh, what is nice is that you can use your unit tests from co-deception in a, a nicer way. So it has also value on the, uh, in the time that you're going to unit test. So you then you can use co-deception. Maybe some people know him, Phil. Yeah, a bishop from Spain. No, he's in the class. <laughs> he's from Turkey. <coughs> now this is, uh, uh, maybe someone knows? Isidro, San Isidro di Sevilla. It is uh, Isidore from Seville. He wrote an uh, encyclopedia around 600, so we're going back in time a bit. And in the Middle Ages, if you wanted to know something, you looked it up in the encyclopedia of San Isidoro. Isidoro, or Isodor Isodorus in, in uh, Latin. And um, he was a kind of a Google avant la lettre, <laughs> you could call him. And the Vatican also wants to go with its time. And so uh, they, um, uh, they, they thought we have the same for everything, but not yet for computers or the internet. We need one. And so they nominated several people, all bearded and with a dress. That's so all ancient here in Europe. And... Um, they choose uh, this one. And so he is now, since 2007, the official patron saint of the internet, the computer users, and computers. So if you want to, uh, <laughs> want to uh, <laughs> uh, buy, you can buy statues of it. I know, I know I had a Catholic aunt who never went into a car without a Saint uh, uh, Christoph statue but this is this should definitely be on your computer <laughs> and <laughs> on every page to say this space is protected by Saint Isidore. <laughs> yeah. That is probably how they do it on in the Vatican on <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, protect their pages so you can just <laughs> hack away <laughs> you know yeah. I'm a bit from uh, from the ancient times and a bit of di dinosaur. My first job was <laughs> with uh, punch cards. So it's, uh, yeah. Before me, they, they only coded with ones <laughs> and, and zeros. And sometimes even the ones were, were not sufficient. They had to flatten them to zero. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. But nowadays we write understandable coders, and especially now with domain driven design and uh, Test-driven design, behavior-driven design, all very uh, uh, understandable. Or do we only use create, read, update, delete? Yeah, very often we do. Oh yeah, uh, so I'm somewhere and I have to program something with employees. Let's uh, create, read, update, and delete an employee. Uh, <laughs> creating. <laughs> read an employee, update an employee, deliver, uh, delete an employee, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the language doesn't fit into the domain. You understand? That's what I, the, the core thing of what I want to say, that the language is so important for how you look at the things. And if we try to create, read, update an employee, or uh, yeah, something is wrong, I think. <laughs> I've 
rather high or higher. That, that other kind of uh, uh, methods you would give to such an to such objects. Well, but if you want to put those objects, the, these are objects in memory, if you want to put them into a database, then you have to use create read object and delete. That is the language of databases. It's also the language of uh, RESTful interfaces. So sometimes you have to use create read object and delete. But if you want to make a rich uh, domain model with, wi with behavior that is uh, from the language of the domain, then you have to have some mapping between those tables and the objects. And that's why we, if you want to use a relational database with its whole relational database paradigm of form keys and normalization and all those things, then you want to map that to uh, uh, the, the objects with maybe an employee that you hire and fire and, and all those things more. So that, that mapping is what a object relational mapping does. It's all about mapping objects to, to tables. Um, I use the doctrine for that. That's the only uh, complete data mapper pattern in, uh, in PHP. You have other ORMs uh, like, in, uh, uh, like Eloquent from uh, Laravel, but it's all active record implementations of a, so it is all the table and the objects are more one-to-one -one. and uh, a data map pattern is a bit more, uh, uh, gives you more possibilities to stay to close to the language of the domain. Um, if you look here also at the doctrine project, you see here is also a database abstraction layer that's laying under it. You have a common library with some collections in it, but you can also use other collections for that, like uh, Raphael. Uh, uh, he pointed to another. Ardent. Exactly. And um, uh, what you also see here is you, s you have a Mongo database document mapper. That's also doctrine. So you can not only to relational database, but also to document databases, you can map in almost the same language. Your, you can map your objects. You see also here PHPCR document mapper. PHPCR is PHP content repository. I'll tell a little bit about that later. I have to hurry, I think. This is all installed by Composer. Of course, we all use Composer. I use uh, ORM Designer because it is uh, so easy to, to get all these specifications for uh, uh, Doctrine uh, in a visual way, in almost kind of uh, ERD, you know, entity relationship diagram for who did something with databases before. When you do something with content management, it might be good to have a look at whether some people have already thought about a specification of what content is and what uh, uh, standards you could make for that. They exist. In Java, they already have a, an API for content. Uh, for, for managing com content. It's called the GCR, Java Content Repository. And that was translated to PHP. So we have a complete specification, that's the API, and we have some implementations, they are also here under it, of a how you could build a, of, uh, specifications of building blocks to build a CMS with. And that is picked up, that's why the arrow is behind uh, here. It starts there and goes there. And Symfony also has a uh, CMS, Content Management <laughs> Framework. The, the, those are bundles that are meant as building blocks if you want to build a CMS. So for instance, in Drupal 8, of course I have uh, HTTP 
XTP Foundation and some other bundles from Symfony, but the everybody has that, has that. But they also took the uh, routing they made for the TMS. And that's a very good uh, thing. And that's also one of the nice things of Composer that you can pick a bit of this, pick a bit of that. <laughs> we uh, don't only have to use um, uh, relational databases. Mongo is very nice, of course, that we have all the, the things we do now with CCKs uh, for uh, ha to specifying what kind of fields you have. You have that in Mongo already uh, directly into the database. Uh, what at this moment is also very hot outside is graph databases, nodes and edges, and you, you know a bit from that, maybe from Drupal, Drupal was originally also had some uh, nodes, node structures, etc. But very interesting is now, I think, this hybrid uh, document database, uh, and one of the people working on that is uh, Alessandro Natali, Nadali, uh, also known as uh, Odino. He was in Italy, one of the, uh, the, the great uh, Joomla guys, but now not doing anything with Joomla anymore. He's now working on this uh, free project for OrientDB. That's very interesting. You have a graph, so all kind of interrelated uh, nodes, and those nodes are documents like you have in Mongo. <laughs> Build a, a, a content management system with that. That must be fast, that must be good. That's also why it was made. I, I now do have some totally different topics, but just want to, in one minute, just show them <laughs> <laughs> all. And that is um, uh, what's very hot now, now also, is, con is uh, separating the commands and the query. It's a bit different if you uh, want to query something. You only want to ask, uh, give me all the articles that do this, this and that, and etc. Or that you have some update of it, etc. That's a whole different thing. And you you can build a different model for that. Something else I I'm working on now, and I think uh, it's. Uh, VCI data context interaction, and that's a, they call it a whole new paradigm. Uh, so they, they want to go to real object oriented programming. They say we don't use any object oriented programming, we use class oriented programming. There's some truth, truth in that. And uh, this is uh, Chris Renskow, he is the inventor of uh, MVC. The original one so is now 84, professor in Oslo, and uh, very active still on mailing lists, etc. And this is James Copian from, from uh, Denmark. And he has a, a bit uh, uh, odd style of teaching people. If, uh, if you ever come to a mailing list, uh, I, I wrote some, something before and I said, and he said, where do you have got that stupid idea of value object from? Oh, you have Fowler, uh, uh, Evans, uh, uh, I know my literature, yeah. yeah. Oh, they, they don't know anything of, of it. Gang of Four just uh, screwed the whole, whole idea, etc. I first thought, what, what a crazy man is that? But uh, he has something to say, and we will he hear more of him. Um, oh, this is telling what it also is. This is the last thing I want to show. I only have some server side things now. What you see uh, more and more being popular at the moment outside Joomla, etc., is uh, to say, okay, MVC, uh, the, the whole model view controller, should be in the presentation layer. That should be in the client side. Only use uh, your model your domain model server side. And um, uh, if, if for instance, Angular is at this mo moment very popular MVC client side uh, uh, JavaScript <coughs> framework. That is 
at the moment not good for CO because you only get uh, so some Jason or uh, uh, maybe it's Mel data on the client and then it is built to a page by JavaScript client side. So at the moment Google will uh, just get uh, the hiccups from that but they are uh, Nicholas just told me yesterday that uh, they're working on that. Uh, well Google. Uh, you see, so Google is working on that, but not yet with CO yet. Should be, but some updates. Oh no! Oh sorry, sorry. Uh, was not for CO. Yeah. And there was also <laughs> one. Yeah, this is also one of the plans for Joomla. The, the was one of the, the plans for Joomla was to make it more uh, a, dis a, a Joomla distribution that is very uh, uh, lean, very uh, small, but only gives web services. And you can read those web services uh, from er any anything, from your phone or from uh, uh, in, a, in an app, or maybe in, in JavaScript. So those web services they are translated uh, client side to a page. Right, so so th there are plans for this also a bit in the direction of Joomla. But yeah. This was about it. Yeah. So uh, th there are a lot of uh, 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 things going on outside Joomla. And I think it's very good to have a to have a look at all those things. Like for instance, those that Symphony CMS delivers some valuable things like routing and uh, 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 menus uh, and things we could maybe use, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. And that's also the, the big thing what Composer and packages have given us. We can have a look at. Before we code something, we can have a look at packages. Is there something that already is in that direction? And maybe have a hold a bit feeling with what others are doing. And what al always is the most important thing is to uh, deliver something of value to the customer, so to, to the end user in the case of, uh, of Joomla CMS, uh, that we, uh, we, we don't go um, tweaking as uh, developers for, uh, oh yeah, and I think that a problem with the new MPC, new, from two years old, is also one of those problems, yeah, it's, what value does it deliver? What's, what, what do, uh, what does the end user gain with this? And there are some things we can, that we better can decouple things and maybe to reuse some things that others have, have given, but so we can learn from that to, to do that better with Joomla. Thank you very much. <laughs>